The annual Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show starts today and runs through the weekend. Yep, Drew Carney is out there right now. He's at the Portland Expo Center with a little preview for us. Good morning, Drew. Hey, good morning there, Christine and Brenda. Uh, I am so confident that we are going to catch trout during the segment. I didn't want to drop my bait in too early, so I'm kind of hovering above the water. Uh, real quickly, Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show is what we're talking about. Ashley Nicole Lewis with the show is my guest for this particular segment. Uh, should we go ahead and drop in? Let's do it. All right. Here. Dropping in. Uh, the Kids Free Trout Pond is a longtime element here at the Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show. It was not a part of the show, though, the last two years for pandemic reasons, as you can imagine. Uh, I want to ask you, why is this important? Why is it so key to have this back at the show this year, Ashley? This is a generational treasure. A lot of people who caught their first trout are now bringing their kids back to bring their catch their first trout, just like this. Are you answering a question and catching a fish at the same time? Is that what you just did on the show this morning? This isn't my first trout rodeo, my friend. This what? isn't this isn't the first one. I am still without a fish, so I will go back in. Uh, <laughs> let's switch. Second question. Yes. Uh, there are some rules. We call it the kids free trout pond. And I remember when my kids literally 10 years ago when they were five stood right where you and I are this morning and caught trout and we took it home and we cooked it up for dinner. That's exactly what happened. But there has to be a limit on how much one kid can take home. Yeah, so kids 12 and under can take two fish home if they want, but they can also catch and release if they would like too. So they can catch a handful of fish while they're here. While I am still without a fish on my line, I will ask you a third and final question. Yes. Are you, were you about to give me a tip? I was going to give you a tip. Just keep flopping it over. They, the pellet bellies like to see it move. Oh! Out. Yay! Mike, <laughs> you literally gave me a tip. And a half second after you did that, I caught a fish. Yeah, nice work. I am liking Ashley Nicole Lewis this morning. <laughs> Last question I'm going to ask you. Yes. Behind us, I don't know if you can see that, Eric. Behind us is another indoor body of water. What is that all about? This is my, maybe my favorite attraction right now. This is the Kayak Pond by Old Town Kayaks. And they have, uh, we have kayaks actually in the pond. We're gonna be doing seminars. I'm gonna be doing a seminar on Saturday. It's gonna be a lot of fun. People can actually see these kayaks in motion. It's one of the fastest growing sports and fishing right now, kayak fishing in the Northwest. So it'll be really cool to see. We will actually do some kayak fishing coming up at 545. So that is it for now from the Kids Free Trout Pond. Back this year at the Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show, which starts today, by the way, runs through the weekend. There on your screen, you see all the days, all the hours, the website for more information. And we're going to end this segment, Rod, with Ashley Nicole proudly holding up her fish with her beautifully manicured nails, I might add. Now to an annual winter event right here in Portland. It is all about fishing and hunting and camping and lots of other outdoor sports. Yeah, and Drew has been there all morning long, like dressed up in camouflage. He was fishing and now he's kayaking. <laughs> hey, Drew. Yes, demonstrating my kayaking skills uh, just real quickly here, Christine and Brenda. Got a little forward action going here for you. Uh, if need be, you can of course apply the brakes. And then if you really need to, yes, you can pull off the reversal going backwards on this Wednesday morning by way of kayak. And we are right smack dab in the middle of this year's Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show. Hopefully I can hit the park button okay so I can stop next to my guest. <clears throat> Pulling it back forward, Brandon. Brandon Hua represents Next Adventure. He himself is also a bass tournament angler so you know what you're doing when it comes to fishing brandon that's what that title suggests i tell myself that i do but <laughs> that's debatable <laughs> here we are right in the middle of this year's sportsman show inside of a large pool and we're demonstrating kayak fishing because if i read this correctly it is the fastest growing segment of the outdoor industry kayak correct. fishing that is correct what makes the kayak fishing experience a little bit different than what people may be used to yeah, so, I mean, the innovation of kayaks over the years has just grown just significantly. Um, you know, like having graphs on it, having pedals as instead of using paddles. Um, there's a lot of that that goes into it. And a lot of things is, you know, not everybody has a real estate to have a, kayak, have a boat and store it. So that's why kayaks is such a great thing for a lot of people. And it's just easy to tow around. You don't have to burn any gas, take the family out. And that's the best thing about it. May I state the obvious this morning? Do you mind if I state the obvious? Yeah. 
There are no fish in this water. I know. You will not be catching any fish during this segment because, again, there is a lack of fish in this water. Well, we can always throw these kayaks into the trout pond. That always works <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, the reason we don't need fish here is because that's not necessary to actually explain how to do it, correct? Absolutely. So during these seminars, during these demonstrations, what are some of the techniques or at least one that you might explain to someone so they can have a better kayak fishing experience? Yeah, so like one of the things is, you know, a lot of us out here like to do some bass fishing. So we'll have a lot of bass baits such as this giant swim bait. You know, and this may seem kind of big, but a lot of bass eat it. So this year we're gonna have a lot of different baits, uh, a lot of different types of seminars, you know, covering certain categories of fishing. You know, we'll have fly fishing. We'll have people teaching you how, like beginners and you know, how to get into kayak fishing and things such as that. So there's opportunities are endless. When you cast a moment ago, I noticed you almost hit Eric Patterson right on the camera. Do you think if I gave you one more shot, you could actually hit his lens from our distance here? I probably could, but I probably don't want to do that. Why not? No, it's great TV. That is good TV. Give it a whirl this morning, Brandon. Brandon going after the camera lens. I don't want to, with I don't his want to lure. Him, but... Here we go. No, nope, <laughs> And Eric's just standing behind the camera with a big smile on his face. Uh, I'll just wrap it up with the details real quickly. Brandon, you are the man. Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show starts today. It runs through Sunday. You see all the days. You see all the hours. And that, again, is the website on your screen for more information if you want to check it out for yourself all weekend long here at the Portland Expo Center. Guys, back to you. Uh, our guest this segment is an expert in the art of calling wild game. He is Jason Phelps. If you want to look him up online, look for Phelps Game Calls. Uh, so a moment ago, we saw you bugling just before the commercial break. And a lot of people would assume that this is what you're using to make that call, but it's actually the small tool in your hand. Explain, please. Yeah, so this is literally a piece of latex that's stretched between a frame. Um, and so we stretch that latex to a, a specific you know, specification, and then that gives us our, our cow sounds, our bull sounds. We can, you know, sound like a herd of elk with one little diaphragm that fits in your mouth. So that in your hand is what you would use to call elk? Yep. Can I hear the demonstration again? And then we... My goodness. Eric, would you turn around? We actually have an elk coming into the... I'm kidding. I'm sorry. And that wasn't... You, sorry. You can go right from your cow sounds into your bull sounds. <laughs> The cows being the female, of course, the bulls being the males. Yep. Both elk calls we just heard. Yep. Can you give me another animal this morning, Jason? Yeah, so we've got some turkey diaphragms here. Um, Looks same, the same, but... Same thing, but this has multiple layers, and we want to create the rasp of a turkey call, so we stack multiple pieces of latex in there and stretch them a little bit different. Same man, two very different animal sounds. <laughs> this morning this is the kind of question i would want to ask before the segment so i know the answer is yes but i'm going to ask it anyway uh are you doing some sort of game calling demonstrations during the course of the of the sportsman show i we actually don't we usually do this year we don't have an uh a demonstration <laughs> but, but you can swing by the booth and we will give you a one-on-one -on -one demonstration if you want uh, uh the booth again yelled out by name so people know phelps game calls booth 1300 here at the pacific northwest sportsman show Felt game calls. Do you have one more uh, call of the wild, so to speak? We do. So blacktail, native here to the northwest. Yes. And, uh, the deer. So we, we've got new deer calls. That's a deer call. That is. A little grunt. Brenda, Christine, Rod, any of you, did you know that was the call of the deer? No, it's I like thought a, it was a, like frog a frog call. call. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy little sound. <laughs> It sounded like a We're belch. on the same page this morning. It's like a belch. Uh, real quickly, I'll give you the show details. <laughs> Can I give you guys the show details one more time? It starts today. It runs through Sunday. We're going to throw that all up on the screen there for you so you can see the hours as well because they do change once we get to the weekend. And there you see the main website for more information on this year's Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show. So let me introduce Brett Stoffel. He is the outdoor survival expert that has been at this Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show for years now. Uh, Brett, you put on seminars every day starting today. Yes. Simply talking about how to survive, if need be, in the outdoors. Yep. Uh, so again, explain this lesson and how this is practical in everyday life. Well, starting a fire is, is really important. It kind of enhances shelter, it makes you feel better, warm, dry, all of that. Um, so common household items that work really, really well for starting a fire is just a kind of a common tip that we give people that are here at the show. Um, cotton and Vaseline, as we showed just before the commercial break as it goes through. Basic household cotton ball. Yes. And all I do is I just kind of expand that cotton ball out, get it nice and exposed. 
And then I'm going to take a little bit of petroleum jelly and get a good finger full. Yes. Carefully measured, of course. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. And I put this together and I just mix all of that petroleum jelly and cotton together. As you continue to do that, I just want to point out, obviously, you can't do this unless you bring these two items with you on your outdoor adventure, but that is also part of your seminar. The Absolutely. fact that you need to bring certain things in order to give, your chance, uh, give yourself a chance to survive if need be. Absolutely. So now that I've got this, that's my kind of waterproof cotton ball fire starting extraordinaire. So I grab a hold of this thing, tear it right in half. Yes. And that exposes all of these little dry cotton fibers. Put that down. You got your fire starting stick and an instant warmth. Instant fire. Very nicely done this morning, Brett yep. Stoffel. Uh, we have time for one more lesson because uh, we talked about the fact that, when, and Rod, by the way, is loving my outfit this morning. Maybe we should stand up for this <laughs> yes, one. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Rod is loving the camo, and this is something someone might be wearing while adventuring in the outdoors. Absolutely. But this would not protect you if you got stuck somewhere overnight, if it started to rain, if the temperature dropped, you would need more, and all you really need is that. Yeah, this is a big plastic bag. Wait a minute, hold on a minute. Yep. It, it's. It comes in this little package. It does, absolutely. But what it is exactly is? It's a big plastic bag. That we, has something in it. We, well, it's gonna have you in it. And so <laughs> we, we go in, it's immediate action shelter. So really, once we take the bag out of the package, okay. open this thing out, I'm gonna put this right over the top of you. Please do. We apologize in advance for the crinkling sound on my microphone. It will happen. The trick here, Brett, can you find my face? <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> oh, here it comes. There we go. And now you're protected. Windproof, waterproof, your body heat starts to warm up the air on the inside and you're good to go. Now you can see me though, Rod. Before you couldn't see me, now you can. Protected and feeling warm and dry this morning inside the Portland Expo Center. He is Brett. Check out his seminars throughout the course of this year's Pacific Northwest Sportsman Show. There you see the days and the hours and the website for more information.